So the question here is asking us, for a particular reaction shown here below, NO2 plus CO goes to NO plus CO2, what is the rate law, what's the value of the rate constant, and what's the concentration of NO2 when 2.74 times 10 to the fourth seconds have elapsed? And the information that I've given here is this table off to the right. So I've got a list of times and the concentration at each one of those times. So the three questions here we can kind of break up into two chunks. The rate law, we're going to have to find graphically. I'm going to use Excel to get the rate law, and in doing so, that's going to give me the value of the rate constant. So let's tackle that part first. Then we'll tackle the part about determining the concentration of NO2 after a certain amount of time has elapsed. So for this part of the problem, what we're going to do is plot the time and the concentrations that they gave us. So here I have the times that were given and then the concentrations of NO2 at those times. And if I just highlight them, click on insert and go over here to charts and this scatter chart with a line, I see that I've got this curve that you always kind of get with these kind of things. And that tells me that this is not zeroth order because I don't have a linear relationship between the two. So now I'm gonna try and see if these are first order. So I'll copy this and move it over here. And instead of plotting time and concentration, I'm gonna plot the time and the natural log of concentration. So the natural log of NO2 and making this cell equal to the natural log of this cell, in parentheses, okay? And I get the natural log there. So I'm gonna move this down get the natural log of all these guys. And then again, I'm gonna highlight these and make a plot and see if it's there. And what I see is something that still looks a bit like a curve. So I'm not fully convinced that this is first order. So again, I'm going to highlight these, copy, bring them over here and paste them. And I'm gonna see if this is maybe second order. So for second order, I plot the inverse of those concentrations, so 1 over NO2. Okay, so that means that this will equal 1 divided by this concentration. And I'll pull this down. There we go. I'm going to highlight this, insert, Scatter plot, and that looks a lot more linear. That's about what I would expect. So here I can see a, a pretty good straight line for all of my points going up in this direction. So what I'm interested in is the slope of that line because that's going to get me the rate constant. So I'm just going to label a cell here called slope, and then right underneath it, I'm going to say that this cell is equal to the slope of that line. And you can see here that Excel asked me for the known y's. Well, my y-axis is this, my concentration, 1 over concentration, comma, my known x's, that's these, and now I get a slope of 0 0.00021, and if I just make this a little bit bigger, I can get some more significant figures in there, so 0 0.00020982, and that's how I can get the, um, the value of the rate constant. So based on the work that Excel did, or we did in Excel, we know that this is a second order rate law because when I plotted uh, time and one over the concentrations, that gave me a line, so I know it's second order. So I can say that the rate is equal to some constant k times the concentration of NO2 raised to the second power because it's, again, second order. And the slope of that line is equal to the number that we have here, 0 0.000210, rounded off to three significant figures. And the units on that are liters per mole seconds. So we know both the rate law, which is written there, and the value of the rate constant. So now with that information, we can actually go in and figure out what the concentration is at a certain time based on the integrated rate law. And that's going to look like this. So the second order rate law is written like this. It's an integrated rate law. So 1 over the concentration of NO2 at any time is equal to the rate constant times the time that we're at plus 1 over the initial concentration of NO2. And um, what I can start doing is start putting in the things that we know or we figured out. So we know the uh, rate constant, and we know the time we're going to do this at, and we know the initial concentration. So the nice thing is our unknowns on one side of the equation, all of our knowns are on the other. 
So it's just a little bit of math to squeeze them all together into something that um, is a single number. So that comes out to 7.67. And when I invert that, it comes out to 0 0.130, which means that the concentration of NO2 after 2.7 times 10 to the fourth seconds have elapsed is 0 0.130. Uh, we can make that time anytime, and we can figure out the concentration at that time. It's a very powerful tool. So um, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and good luck on all of your integrated rate law problems.